Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to get this LH6 torn apart. So basically we're just going to take the heads off of it and see how they are. Because uh, if you guys can see this, the uh, piston there exploded in this engine. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it did some pretty decent damage. So uh, you can see it. That's obviously pretty loose. And then uh, it did nick up the head a little bit there but we're going to pull them off and see if they're savable so that way we can put them on the six liter so i'm going to go ahead and get these pulled off and then we will kind of do an in-depth kind of time lapse of taking that thing apart so let me uh let me go ahead and get to this and then uh we'll go over and see what they look like and then we'll go on from there So we got both of the heads off, so we can go ahead and check these out. Um, it's not really looking too bad. I mean, we had a there was a chunk of metal that was sitting right here that was just kind of like stuck on the carbon, but it didn't actually hurt the head any. And this is actually off of bank two, so this isn't the one that had the piston explode, but that cylinder looks okay. And then uh, there's our problem child right there. I would have thought that with the piston doing what it did, we would see more damage here but I'm kind of glad we don't. I mean, we've got a little bit of, of kind of markings right here, but overall that's not really that bad. The only thing we need to do is we need to open up this, you know, both of these valves and make sure that a piece of metal didn't get stuck in between the valve and the head and cause any problems there where the valve seals. So I'll end up taking these to the machine shop and getting them pressure checked and milled and then, uh, you know, having them all cleaned up. But I think they'll be all right. I'm kind of optimistic about it. So, you know, it kind of looks like this has a gap right here, but, you know, as you can see, that's the same on all of them. So, you know, it shouldn't be too bad. And then taking a quick look at this, there's that problem child right there. Doesn't really look like it hurt the uh, cylinder too bad. I mean, it just needs re-sleeved. It's got a big gouge right here. You can't see it, um, but it's got a couple gouges in it. So if I wanted to use this engine, I'd have to get this re-sleeved. I was kind of thinking about turning it into a table because I already have like a old uh, multi-port fuel injection 3.1 with a piece of glass on the top of it with the pistons, uh, with the connecting rods as the legs. So I might just turn this into a table. Who knows? I really wanted to use it for the Trans Am that I got sitting outside so I can work on that with my daughter when she gets to be old enough. But, uh, you know, I don't know if it's going to be worth resleeving when I could just go pick up a 5.3 at the junkyard. Yeah, this is aluminum block, but it doesn't really matter. So anyways, let's go ahead and get the other engine apart. We'll set the head side by side. We'll go over everything and see what it all looks like. And then, uh, you know, We'll kind of see what happens from there.
Okay, so now that I've made a complete mess of my garage, <laughs> we have the engine pretty much apart. So um, I'm not gonna worry about taking these off yet. I took the one off, but I need to get a different tool to take it off so I'm not going at it like a caveman with a hammer. So with the one that I took off though, um, you can see this here, this bearing, hopefully I got the right angle on it, but this bearing right here looks pretty good. So, you know, I, I think that'll be okay. I'm gonna assume the rest of them look like that, but we're gonna take them off. Obviously this is all gonna get cleaned and, and uh, you know, gone completely through. I'll probably get new um, main cap bolts there. Just, uh, you know, if they're torqued to yield, obviously they need to be replaced anyways. So maybe get some studs, I don't know yet. It all just depends on what the budget allows. So, so far everything looks all right. Uh, the cam looks pretty good. We got some dirt and stuff in there, but once again, this is all gonna get cleaned. So, uh, you know, everything looks all right. There's no grooves in it or anything. Um, I, I might just try to get new lifters anyways, just because it's all taken apart. I'm probably not gonna be able to afford to get a cam, but that'll be all right. So I did notice that on one of my push rods, which is back in there, um, the end of it is kind of getting this, uh, I don't know what you want to call it. You know, it, it's not a completely round shape. I mean, it's kind of getting oval or whatever. So probably gonna have to replace the one push rod for sure. Um, you know, the cam does have a little bit of kind of pitting in it here and there, but you know, once again, nothing, nothing really to get too worried about. So all of the connecting rod bearings look great. And then uh, the one thing that I did that any LS guy will tell you not to do is I looked at the cam bearings. So, um, you know, they got a little bit of, you know, a little bit of wear to them. So, you know, ideally, there's my socket that I dropped earlier. <laughs> you guys might be able to see that in the time lapse. But anyways, um, I, I don't know if I'm going to worry about those yet or not. I mean, it would probably be a good idea to go ahead and do them. But, you know, overall, everything looks all right. So um, this thing, unfortunately, has these super long bolts sticking out of the backside for the, um, you know, little engine stand here to mount to it. So I have to pull the engine out and then roll it over so that we can look at the other side. But let me go ahead and do that real quick and then we'll take a look at that and we'll finish this video up. Okay, so unfortunately after wiping the cylinders down and taking a look at it, you guys can see that. I mean, it's got this kind of rusty pitting stuff going on. That's because this engine sat outside for a while before I had gotten it. And unfortunately it had a little bit of rust in the cylinders. So this one's pretty bad i can really feel some pitting here so these are definitely going to need to be you know cleaned out i don't know if they'll just be able to hone them and call it good or if i'm gonna have to board over or what but something's gonna have to be done about that so that's kind of unfortunate um you know i wasn't really planning on that but at the same time though i did know that that was the case so not too big of a deal um you know just another thing that's kind of kind of prolonged the time that the car is down but that's the whole point of doing this is to find these issues and get them fixed before they become major issues so there's no point of letting this perfectly good lq4 go to waste when uh you know we could just send it the way it is and, and end up probably having issues so anyways the last thing we need to look at is the heads um you know these are the ones off the lq4 they are 317 heads um you know let me go ahead and get these put into a position so we can look at these versus these 799s side by side. Okay, just for a quick side by side comparison here, you can see that this chamber here is completely cut out on this side. You know, you've only got this kind of flat spot over here. You'll notice on the 799s that they have a little bit of a ledge there. So, um, you know, and I think the valves are different sizes, but I don't have the tools to measure that here. But that's just one of the subtle differences you can notice there. And then, uh, I don't think you're really going to see anything as far as on the intake ports. Um, but, uh, you know, the exhaust ports, um, yeah, they, they look about the same. So overall, I mean, the main advantage of going with these 799 heads is lowering the compression a little bit, or sorry, raising the compression a little bit to kind of squeeze out a little bit of extra power out of this thing. So, you know, overall, I'm pretty excited about that. I think that'll be pretty cool to have on there, especially once it gets a cam on it kind of deuce it up just a little bit. I mean, my goal for naturally aspirated horsepower would be probably somewhere, probably somewhere in the 450 wheel horsepower range. I don't know if that's going to be easily doable or not. Um, I'm just going to have to mess with it and see, but 
eventually once the car does go turbo, um, you know, we should be shooting for more like a hopefully 700 horsepower range. We're just gonna have to see where things go. So anyways, I'm gonna get things cleaned up, uh, you know, get this video thrown together and post it up and, uh, you know, see you guys next time. So if you got anything to say, say it in the comments, uh, any suggestions, anything that you think might be helpful or beneficial, or even maybe some resources to get these things done uh, for a really reasonable price. Just let me know. And, uh, you know, like I always say, go ahead and like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. And uh, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.